Hey everyone, how's it going? Tyler here, and tonight I got another video about another computer to make. Uh, quick shout out, I'm on Skype right now with Dale0304. There he is right there. He just is Hi. using his new I'm Mac. Over here. Yeah, he's got his MacBook, by the way. Anyway, th he requested this video, so I figured why not? Might as well go ahead and do it. I haven't made one on it yet. This is a Gateway Astro. It has an Intel Celeron 400 megahertz with uh, Windows XP on it, actually. I installed it just to see how it ran, and it obviously runs absolutely horrible, but, uh, <laughs> anyway. Up here, you've got a CD drive, a speaker, a microphone, the activity LED, the button, a, uh, a floppy drive, the activity LED for that, the eject button, you got the power button, the uh, power light, headphone jack, and an e oh yeah, another speaker. You have your uh, 1024 by 768 CRT display, which is all integrated into the body. If I turn it around to the back, you'll see that this model has the uh, cooling fan up here. You're going to see the sticker do it in there. The hard drive bay. Which is a got a 4.3 gigabyte quantum drive in it, a 56k dial-up modem, the port which was optional, unfortunately, so this model doesn't have it, but that's for a uh, 10100 Ethernet uh, jack, two USB 1.0s, and on the side over here, we have two more USB 1.0s or 1.1s, I should say. We also have a Kensington lock and a power lead. On the bottom here, it just says that the uh, model number and all, you know, it's got a gate, it's the Gateway Astro, made in North, uh, or South Dakota. A quick look at everything. It has an automatic switching power supply, as you can see, so, uh, yeah, it's Energy Star approved and all. We have a vent, I believe this is intake, I'm actually not sure. I'm looking at it now, I kind of need to clean it, I guess, but, uh. You have directions right here to uh, raise it up. You take this, and if I could, you would spin that around, and it would hold it up. So that's pretty cool. So uh, before we go ahead and turn this machine on, I'm going to get a screwdriver, and I'm going to open the bottom up to show you guys the uh, internals of this thing and show you just how like proprietary and unupgradable this thing really is. So I'll be right back to you guys. So now, uh, upon removal of the long, or not too long, but uh, large screws, and the whole base just kind of comes off. It unplugs from this little proprietary connector, which gives the uh, actual computer uh, power and video signal to this little connector right here. It's a card edge connector. The power supply and all is up in the uh, top unit up here, which... I kind of expected to be like that on a proprietary machine like this. So uh, to get in it, you have a screw right here. You just get this screw out. And you have a screw back here. So now that I got both of those out, this whole little panel just kind of shimmies on out of there. And now this is when the unupgradability factor of this computer starts kicking in. You can see you have a socket 370 uh, Intel Celeron 400 megahertz in here, along with only one stick of, or one DIM or slot period of PC100, I believe, or yeah, PC100, if it'll focus memory in there, so uh, that really limits your expansion. This machine came with 64 megabytes stock, but it, when I was trying to do the XP challenge on here, I just decided to throw, you know, 128 megs, even though that isn't a very big upgrade, it's still better than 64. So, uh, yeah. Another thing on this computer that's quite an issue is cooling. So you have this, compu this CPU cooler taking air in through this, which, granted, they did put a rubber gasket to you know, stop air leakage and maximize the amount of air that could be channeled through there. But it's taking hot air off of the power supply unit in this... If I can get it to focus. In this enclosure in there, so, uh... 
Gateway, what were you thinking when you did that? <laughs> it has the Intel 810 chipset, I believe, or G810. And since I know a few of you guys are interested in hard drives, I think I'm going to go ahead and just pull out the drive on this thing to show you guys. It's a... I can't remember if I upgraded this or not. I believe it's just 4.3 gigs. So we have a Samsung DVD drive, or CD drive, which I'm going to have to replace at some point because the uh, gears are starting to get stripped. It just, it makes a really, really nasty sound when opening. So as you can see, you just pull this out. And here's the drive. Quantum Fireball CR three and a half inch series and yes I have um, checked this drive and it is not in critical condition so uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit longer on this drive because I don't really have any other drives that are small enough that I'd put in here at some point I might put a 10 gig in here and just use this little guy as like a uh, jukebox because that actually would be a very sweet little use I'd set it up on top of that table up there guys and then you just let this little guy play out some music through some Gateway 2000 speakers that I actually have laying around up in that top drawer. So who knows, guys? Maybe sometime you'll see a video on this, which uh, it'd probably be running Windows 2000 because that should run decently on this this spec of machine. Uh, well, maybe I'd put Windows 98. I'm not sure. Probably 2000 though, just because it has slightly better support. And I could put the uh, Service Pack 4, or Service Pack 5 unofficial update on it. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Uh, but yeah, it's a very, very small motherboard. You can tell where the trace for that um, Ethernet would have been. And another odd thing is, as you can see right here, you have the uh, pins coming off from here over to the VGA port on the motherboard. And this, while that edge right there is proprietary... This, everyone, is just your typical one of the mill VGA. So that right there is just your standard VGA. As you can see, it just plugs right on in there. So that's pretty cool, I'd say. Now if I can get this um, screw put on my Husky screwdriver right here. I'll screw it back in. Uh, and on, then we'll do a quick boot test on it. We have the uh, little header up front, which has two little capacitors on it. They are what brand? Uh, I actually don't see what brand are the caps on this board. Well, I can't tell. Anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, let me just get the hard drive and I'll screw it in, and then I'll come back and. You know, we'll just boot this little guy up and see what it can do. Alright guys, so I got this Dell keyboard and Logitech M100 mouse hooked up. Just for testing sake. Now let's go ahead and power this thing on and see what it does. And when I got this machine, it didn't work, so I took it apart and I replaced a CMOS battery and that made it work, so um, that's good. Let's see if we get into the BIOS here. Here we go. Get the little floppy drive. Is there a disk in there? You know what I mean? Listen to that. Uh oh. Um. Yeah, what I was saying about the hard drive being okay, I guess, wasn't true. <laughs> Uh, I guess the drive died all of a sudden. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I'll get into the BIOS because I'm sure at least somebody's gonna want to see this. Oh wait. Yeah, there you go. It's just typical BIOS setup. 66 meg frontside bus. 
So, uh, yeah, guys, that's the Gateway Astro. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave me a thumbs up, drop a comment if you have any questions or concerns. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, next video we're gonna be seeing is the one of that Canon computer back there, so, uh, this should be interesting. Alright, guys, I'll see you sometime soon. See you guys later. Now, the removal of the base on this laptop required, or this, uh, computer, requires quite a, uh, fat-headed screwdriver. This is, uh, I don't know if it says what size it is on the actual screwdriver. It doesn't, but, uh, anyway, you just got these four screws, one over here. Once I get it out, if I can get it out, that is. They are quite, you know, large screws in diameter. Like I said, if you can see in there, they have quite the head on them. So if I can stop looking through the viewfinder of the camera and actually try to unscrew it. <laughs> And that would be even better. So uh, I'm just going to put the camera down and unscrew these real quick, and I'll be right back to you guys.